Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League, the Champions League, a little bit of Europa League as well tonight. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Erlen Haaland, historic night, leads Man City past RB Leipzig into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Liverpool's front-footed approach comes up short as Real Madrid eliminate the Reds. Arsenal out of the Europa League after Sporting eliminate the Gunners on penalty kicks and more concerns for Southampton and Crystal Palace in their pursuits of Premier League survival after suffering crucial defeats to Brentford and Brighton. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Okay, Mr. Musto, I think we have to start the week um, at the Etihad. Uh, Manchester City going into the second leg, 1-1 with Leipzig. Uh, A Leipzig team, I have to say, who showed well in the second half um, of the away game. Bordiol getting a header um, and then having one or two chances. And I think people thought City would get through this one, Rob, but I don't think with the size, with the Mm. ease, with Haaland, I mean... It was at times it was quite incredible watching to to think this young man is scoring at this rate, making it look that easy at the highest level of mm. domestic football. It was it was a little bit one of those. As I was watching, it, Rob, I was, I was kind of thinking we've all played at school with the goal hanger, the guy <laughs> who stands at the top of the pitch, waits for the ball, smashes it into back of the net, and that's the only pleasure he really gets out of the game. I mean, mm. Erlen Haaland is becoming the top professional top Champions League European world gold hanger. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he does it pretty well, doesn't he? I mean, it, it just in terms of being in the right place at the mm. right time when ricochets and saves and bounce back right into his path. And of course, off both feet, he's a really great finisher. Yeah, I mean, he was in beast mode, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, Arlen was in beast mode. And Gvardadal, is it the, um, probably got his name all wrong there. Guardiol, Guardiol, yeah. mm. the guy is meant to be one of the best young mm. centre-backs on the planet right now. It's not a great look for him that Man yeah. City lost 7-0. I thought City started off, Rob, with great intent. Um, yeah. Evening game, Champions mm. League. I thought there was a good atmosphere in the stadium, which there isn't, you know, there isn't all the time a great atmosphere, but there was. I just thought City's football, Rob, they were in the mood for it. Yeah. Absolutely in the mood for it. And then when the goal started to, to come, of course, the... Um, the handball, another one of those for me a little bit where Rodri heads it back onto the yeah, guy's arm, Henrik's arm. I, I, you know, at this point with handball, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised with anything. I, I believe more than ever that, that I wish that FIFA will look at the handball law yeah. again mm-hmm. um, because it's so, it's so harsh that, a, that somebody can head the ball down in a challenge from a yard away and his arms a little bit away from his body yeah. in a challenge. And it, I, I just, it's just not fair. It's just not fair for me. In my opinion, it's not fair to get a free shot, penalty kick from Fahal and from 12 yards because of that. So, of course, that made no impact on the game. It was the no. first goal. Haaland scores a penalty and then they get another six after that. Um, Erlen Haaland, five goals, incredible. But um, no, I'm, I'm not going to focus on the handball, mate. I have had my no. say. I think it's a mm-hmm. joke. Um, but no, City up for it. Good atmosphere, good football. Um, played really, really well. So it's interesting, uh, and you said that, that City did start with a good intention, mm. with a focus. I think there's a couple of reasons around that. We'll, we'll touch on uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Pep in a, in a moment. But yeah. I just thought, I, I heard a, an interesting debate, Rob, after the game, um, one of the radio shows, where someone was suggesting that basically, you know, there's been this debate, does Haaland make them better or the better team with him? Do they play less football? And and, and, mm. and somebody phoned up and, and made it, I thought, quite a reasonable ch- um, opinion and say when City play well he gets those chances when City don't play so well he doesn't look so good and doesn't create that many chances most of his chances come through City's good play so Foden has to be on Grealish has to be on De Bruyne has to be on Gundogan if their game's not quite at it he's one of them that he I think he gets affected by he doesn't mm. get so many he's mm. not Harry Kane he's not Marcus Rashford he's not that finisher who's you know dribbles past people he gets on the end of things, as you say, he's reading and he's hunger. And he's, I, I wrote down, Rob, one of my points as I was watching. It's almost like he's got a GPS where the goal is. Mm. And wherever it, the ball is, he's already honing in on where mm. he needs to be to get that goal. And mm. it's, a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a unique skill that he's got and shouldn't be taken for granted. But the argument was, Rob, that there's times when City haven't played so well, he hasn't scored, and people are blaming him 
rather than turning it the other way. Well, huh. interesting, Rob. Um, I will turn it the other way, just just mm. for a, a different side of that. It's a good point, but I think that is the point. I think when he's in the side, Rob, it's one less um, really silky, creative player with movement and with link-up play. That yeah. When City are at their best, they'd rather have... It's like when, when Pep... Let's talk years ago that he would have a team full of midfield players. Yeah. So the fact when 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 that person said he's not his best when the team aren't playing the curate if uh their best style of football, yeah. Well, maybe because he's in the side and he's part of the link up that's not quite as good. Again, it's just it's just an angle on this. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point, but that, that's the point, isn't it? That if they've had a you know a, a false nine at their folding or something, mm. then the football might be might be better and more creative without him in the side, but I, yeah, I that, you, that's, that's I the, the, the counter argument is you might not get, you can't get both. You get the beast yeah. mode. That, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Or you get the silky yeah. footballer. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. And the balance is there, Rob. They can yeah. try and get the balance. I thought, yeah. I thought there's a couple of balls over the top for yeah, Ireland was good, yeah. early on, which they got to try and do. They got to cross mm. the ball a little bit more, which they have done. And, and, and I think we've had a few games. I can't remember the, which game specifically where I got actually only a couple of pods ago where I remember saying that, that was, that was kind of, that was old and new city all at yeah, once. Some of both. the football. Yeah. yeah the yeah. bit of both. And that's yeah. obviously the sweet mm. spot. If they can, if they can play that curative penetrating football, because he's the guy you want to pull the ball, the ball back to, and he's going to score a ton of goals. Um, so I think that's that's probably a I think it's a pretty accurate mm. um, assessment of where we're at with City with him in the side. Yeah. Um, when the football's good with him in the side, and he gets on the end of things, as you mm. said, there he just just standing in the right spots. I mean, he's just you know he's almost like he laughs, doesn't he? He came off the yeah, field, and it's yeah. like. He, he, the he wanted six, Pepe's... didn't he? He, he wanted <laughs> six. He was gutted he came off, he said. He, he, well, that he would have been a record, wouldn't it? I think that yeah, would have been a record yeah. in a Champions League game if he'd have got the sixth goal. Yeah, big um, masses. But um, mm -hmm. interesting, Rob. The one, so there was there was a bit of talk, and, and I, I didn't pick it all up at first. So I went back, started to read a few things. And there was a few comments from Pep before the game of Kevin De Bruyne. And Pep mm. basically came out and said, Kevin's got to get back to doing the simple yeah. things to get himself back to form, which... Some might think is a bit harsh um, in terms of the amount of assists and how important he's been to the football club. Maybe this is Pep's way of just poking a great player and trying to get another... We've talked about those five and 10% can be different. I thought De Bruyne is not a smiling player. He's not one of them who you see, you know, doing big things on the, on the, on the pitch and, and laughing and joking. But he was involved in the game, scored a brilliant goal, hit the... Hit the um, yeah. crossbar with the one that come back to Holland yeah. and was all the things we know and expect from, from Kevin De Bruyne can do. So maybe well done, Pep. I, I think, I think absolutely well done, Pep, Rob, because mm. in my opinion, it is crazy harsh, but I, but you must think that Pep feels that Kevin yeah. can get to a higher level and he's, there's more to, and I think he knows that if he gives him a bit of stick publicly, yeah, that De Bruyne reacts. It hurts, yeah. hurts him, yeah. and instead of being pissed off about it or being yeah. sulky about it, he steps up. Mm. And this was a great example. He gets poked by his manager, which is like it is harsh because yeah. he's an incredible yeah, player that seems to be mm. playing pretty well for me. But Pep thinks there's more from him, and he will say things like the simple stuff and all that. And he might, you know, of course that might be a point. He might get a little sloppy, yeah. but I think he knows that he gets a reaction from Kevin De Bruyne. The goal into the top corner is like celebration. Is like you know, re remember, yeah. remember, yeah. you yeah. know what I can do. But going back to your last point, Rob, <clears throat> well done, Pep. Well done, Pep. Finding a way to motivate a player that most managers probably wouldn't want to criticize because he's yeah. so great yeah. and he's so, I don't know, he, he's so productive for the team. But Pep still feels he can do more, and poked him, and he was he was superb. He was superb in the game. Yeah. Usual uh, standards we see from him. Um, in terms of City, Rob, um, many talking about... So I heard some discussions again that, well, it was only Leipzig and whatever, but when City are in that mood, Rob, and can perform in that way, they can win the Champions League. What you do know with City is there's a day that is not like that. It's mm. a bit of an off day for them, whether they get in their own heads or whatever. There's a game between now and the final that could stop them mm. winning it, Rob. Mm. What, 
How do they? Mm. How do they balance that? Out? How do they mm. make sure get over that? Now you know they talk that Holland's in the team, so he might score them the extra goal that gets them through a game that they would have lost four three. But there's still a game. There's still a day, Rob, when mm. we, we're saying those De Bruyne's and Fo- Gre- Grealishes and Foden's and Gundogan's doesn't quite work in a two in a two like um, game in the Champions League against proper quality opposition. I think between now and the final, there's one off day for City. The longer it goes, the more <laughs> difficult it, it, it becomes for them. Fascinating. It is fascinating, mate. And, mm. I, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to chuck a couple of angles at you. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, first off, at this kind of tempo, Leib- Leipzig had no answer for no, them. No. But we know now, and del- we, we'll get into it a little later, we've got the list of teams that's still in yeah. there for the, uh, yeah, for yeah. the last eight teams. There's some good teams in there. <clears throat> what I would say, Rob, and I think I've been saying this the last few years about Pep and the Champions League, that they, they gave... They give teams opportunities. And the further yeah. you get into this competition, those players are good. And they take the opportunities yeah. and they and they crush, not crush, but they they find a way to knock out Man City. All I would say, Rob, <clears throat> the way that they're playing, yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different. And even in this game, could they be a little bit more protected on the counter when, you know, I'm looking at the back three that was Nathan Ake, Ruben Diaz, yeah. Mamad Akanji, that stay back as a three. And John Stones, as mm. we know, yeah. you know, sometimes it's Walker, but but I kind of like it with Stones. Right back goes into midfield alongside Rodri. That's a pretty solid five. That's a five mm. players that really are behind the ball when the ball goes forward and De Bruyne and Gundogan, everybody else charges forward. That's a five-man foundation, an insurance mm-hmm. policy of five men. I don't know whether it's ever been five before, and this three, two, four, one, which kind of it looks like when they yeah. when they do that. Yeah. Again, maybe they were doing it last year, but I don't I don't seem to remember us reporting on it much, Robbie. It's a little different the way that they do it. Maybe a bit more extreme. I just don't know whether that could give them something else, Rob. And you know, I, coming into this podcast, I thought, you know, do I think City can do it this year? Because you've got to, with, with that guy up front. Yeah that can get the extra goals maybe they need when they might concede a couple. I do feel that the foundation, the insurance is a little stronger this time around and they might have a better chance, Rob, of, uh, of going all the way again, as, as we go through the weeks and the different rounds, we'll see the form because it's mm-hmm. not just about cities, it's how other yeah. teams are looking. Sure. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I feel a little different this year, Rob. I feel a little different <laughs> as if this year, it, it, you know, between him up there, and a little bit more caution in some of the bigger games I've noticed. Um, we'll see if they can do a little bit extra step. What, what do you think? Um, I agree with you. At times, I think like Ake as a left back is, is is a more natural left back. I think help is helpful. Yeah, yeah. I the think more you know what defender. you're going to get. You know where mm. he is. It's a bit more consistent. Mm. Um, even Stones to a certain degree. At times, although you might need Walker's pace to get you out of trouble. You know, is he as reliable as maybe Stones? It was almost like, you know, four centre-backs playing in those four defensive positions, yeah. which which is, like you said, yeah. an interesting look. That extra man next to Rodri, mm-hmm. even Gundogan holding a little bit more than Mate, we've seen what, when is, is yeah. required. So, yeah, listen, if they get the balance right, if they get in, in that kind of form and he's in beast mode, Mm. Nobody should should be able to stop them, but that's mm. the challenge of mm. of this this competition. That's a challenge for Pep. This is a challenge for great players. We've seen them, we've fancied them at many times, Robert, at this point in the competition, and for some reason it's not mm. quite happened. So, mm. but another great a great day, five great goals yeah. for early in Haaland. I mean, yeah. his numbers, Rob, are ridiculous. Thirty nine in all competitions, twenty eight in the Premier League as well. Mm. Mm. I think he's broke the club record, which was standing for nearly a hundred years. 39 mm. goals uh, mm. in a season and he's still got somebody said he could have to, like 15 games left or something mm. and you know how things go let's move it on mate to madrid to liverpool um was always up, up against it five two down from the first leg nightmare um performance at anfield and it was one of those nights where i think jürgen klopp before the game was quite the same we have one percent chance of um, of getting some something from this. I suppose that needed an early goal, needed a little bit of you know the Man United type performance, you know the efficiency in front of goal. In the end, it was none of those, and they end up losing one nil. Rob thought they mm. started the game and had a bit of a go, yeah. um, but in fairness, I also thought there was a certain amount of 
Champions League experience know how about the Madrid team that also did a good job in, in making sure it was nil nil at half time and basically then it was really you know Liverpool were up against it to, to kind of score four goals in the second mm. half. Yeah, I mean I think you know I think the team went for it. You know, mm. I I was a little surprised at Cody Gakpo playing yeah as a number eight in midfield, midfield yeah. like in, mm. in midfield, like wow, never seen that before. So fair play. He certainly went for it. Yeah. I mean I I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a ton of goals. It was super open at the mm. start. Liverpool had a little bit of a rally up. They started pretty strongly. Yeah. They had a couple of chances. Then Real Madrid had a couple of chances. As goalkeepers, both had really good days, made tons yeah. of saves. I just thought we were going to get a load of goals. Then what I thought happened, Rob, is that when the goals didn't come, I thought there was a there was an element of oh, we can't do it then from Liverpool. There was a, mm. like like and Real Madrid were like. Well, we don't really need to score a goal. I thought we kind of it went into a bit of a stalemate. Like mm. Liverpool lost belief, Rob. I thought after the first 15, 20 minutes, Real Madrid started to get on the ball and create chances. They looked the better side. They worked. Allison's probably the mm. best player in the game. He he made a ton more um, saves than Courtois did, and and the, the difference of the two teams was there to see. But I just I was disappointed because I just I just think if we'd have got goals a little earlier. Mm. Maybe it, you know something a bit more fun was on, but I just thought that both teams didn't really feel a big desire to go and score because Liverpool didn't believe they could get back into it after the first twenty minutes, and Real Madrid didn't need to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I give more bit... credit to, to to Madrid on that. I think at the end of the day, they didn't want this game to get alive. They didn't probably no. want to poke too much. I just thought that you know that Camavinga. Yeah. Cruz and Modric, I thought the longer the game went, the more control they had. Vinicius Junior on that left hand side, I thought is in, uh, just a threat. Yeah. Yeah. At times he, I mean, his speed and dribbling ability to, to eliminate defenders. I mean, Trent had a bit of a, another well, difficult yeah. night uh, yeah. on, over that side of the pitch. And, and as you say, they needed the, Alisson to be in really good form um, before Benzema chose one in and, and you know, makes it 6 2. And, and, and that was that. But um, listen, it, it would it have been a had to have been something very, very special. And yeah. As you said, it never really, never felt like it got into that kind of that way at any point in the game for me. And uh, I credit Madrid on that. Mm. You know, the bad night at Anfield in, in, in the end has, has cost Liverpool. And, and now they've got to make concentrate on full spot and getting back in the Champions League that way. Yeah, they, they had no, they had, they gave Real Madrid no trouble in the second half, Rob. No. A couple of players I thought were, were excellent and were totally at it and strong with Militao and uh, Antonio Rudiger. Yeah. The two centre backs of Real Madrid, again, they were, you could see, they were fired mm. up early, pretty early, following the attacking players in Liverpool everywhere, aggressive in their defending. Um, yeah, second half, not, they weren't bothered by Liverpool. And no. yeah, I guess you look now, Liverpool's season. Jurgen Klopp knows now that's it. That's kind of it now. They've got yeah. one thing to go for, and that's a top four finish. Um, and I don't know, mate. I, I don't know. I don't know whether they've got it in them this year to to to, hmm. to find Six a way. Six points behind now, aren't they? Six points yeah. behind Spurs. Yeah. But it's it's going to be a again. Yeah, you just don't... It's not the reliance. It's not the consistency that I think you go, they'll go unbeaten. They'll go on 10-game unbeaten run. Not mm. sure that you feel that quite about this Liverpool group as mm. as it stands. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, we said it a million times, Rob. Then yeah. even Fabinho, I thought struggled. Milner's, mm. you know, he is what he is at this point. Gakpo didn't help in midfield. If that protection's not in place for the back four, which it has been in previous seasons, the back four is has been left open because they're mostly high. Trent's yeah. really advanced. Yeah. We know that. So it's only kind of three at the back. Sometimes two at the back as Robertson gets forward as well. And whatever level you're playing at, and whichever team. In some, even you know the Premier League sides, they're gonna they're gonna continue to take advantage of that. I feel so. Yeah. Maybe wrong. Maybe wrong. Maybe maybe Klopp can get him revved up for one mm. one last run now to the end of the season to find a way to get into top four. Because you have got to think, Rob. You know, I know that there, and this is just a, I guess back to the ownership thing on this. And I know that um, John Henry and Family Sports Group kind of basically said, like, listen, we're not selling the club. We're looking yeah. for some investment. I just wonder, Rob, whether that was a bit of a ploy to kind of try and assure Jurgen Klopp that, that there is going to be money, money available. That, that we're not going to be a club that's looking to sell. So we're not going to invest. So Klopp doesn't think about and looking for a new challenge. I don't know. We, we'll see. It's gone very quiet on that side of things. Yeah. Um, I guess the proof's in the pudding, putting in the summer market and that's going to be, of course, that's going to be judged on or um, decided upon where they're at, whether in the, yeah. the Champions League or not. So, 
But your Klopp's got to just try and get the boys together now and, and finish strongly and get in the top four. But again, I, I'm not very confident that they're going to do it, read. given the way they are at the moment. I read a line where he said their season kicks in after the international games. That was yeah, what he night, said. They've got a nightmare run of games, haven't they? City, Arsenal, City, Chelsea and Arsenal. Yeah. Three games when we come from international yeah. break. He said that yeah. will tell us whether we're in it or not. Yeah, and, and, and given the situation, Rob, they can't afford to lose no. one or two of those, can mm. they? They can't not, with the, with the based points. Based on where the others, you know, Brighton are still going well. Brentford, we yeah. talked about, are still not, you know, hanging yeah. in there as well. So yeah. it's not like it, it's just theirs and Spurs to, to mm. buy for. These, these others in, in the mm. race as well. So, yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, to do for Liverpool, time. yeah, it's going to have to refocus. What, what, you know, a bit of a test for, for Jurgen Klopp and his group to see how, mm. how, how much they can get out the rest of the season. And try and make it into that top four to get Champions League football again. Hmm. Let's look at the Champions League, mate. The, the last hmm. eight teams we've got a list here of who's left in it. I could go through it real quick. AC Milan, yeah. Bayern Munich, um, Benfica, Chelsea, Inter Milan, uh, Manchester City, Napoli, and Real Madrid. Madrid. Fair play hmm. to Serie A, by the way. Fair yeah, play to three, the Italian three teams. in, isn't it? I think yeah. since 2006. They've had, this is it. The last time they had three teams in the in this stage of quarters, yeah. So what we're looking at with the favourites, Robert? What do we? What do um, we sort of let's pull out of this? And what, what? What are you thinking? Give me a maybe. I, a final. I think because we see City every every, mm. every week, we watch English football. I think we believe it's the best league in the world. I mm. think whether rightly or wrongly, we would still feel Manchester City would start as favourites. I'm not sure what, how the book is at it. In all fairness, I probably think, but Bayern Munich wouldn't be too far behind them. Yeah. Real Madrid wouldn't be too far yeah. behind Bayern. And, you got a, and, you got Napoli. and Napoli, mm. Napoli would be my little yeah. pound of your hard-earned money as a yeah. sneaky little outsider right now. Well, I've got I just I've just put a circle around them. Yeah. Uh Manchester City. And then like as you said, Bayern and Real Madrid. I don't mm. think Chelsea can go all the way. No. I don't think Inter can. I'm pretty sure no, that AC Milan, Milan teams, no. can't. No. Um and Benfica. Know, Benfica, probably not. I mean, listen, mm. this is this competition in, in yeah. two legs. We've seen all sorts of yeah. upsets, and it's where it gets where it's brilliant now. This from quarterfinals yeah. in, yeah. it's pretty blimmin' amazing competition. So, none of those games are going to be they're going to be great to watch all of them. But I, I would put a final. I would love to see a final of Man City versus Napoli, given Spalletti's work at that yeah, football yeah. club and Osman, mm. the, the big striker, yeah. and the way their midfield players. They're a pretty dynamic teammate. Not that I've seen yeah. a ton of them, no, but they look enough. pretty. Yeah. yeah, they look pretty. I mean, dynamic. Awesome the Did you see the header? He yeah, scored. pretty good. Wow. Yeah, good jump wow. in it. Yeah, it's a good jump. jump. Yeah. yeah. So I think Jules tomorrow, isn't it? I think it's seven a.m. Eastern Friday. time. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow. That's right. So yeah, yeah. We'll see. And all bets are off. Anybody they, can. Anybody can play anybody. Draw the quarters and through to the semis. semis. Yeah. And that. So yeah, we'll know yeah. sort of who's headed where. So yeah, we'll maybe have a little chat about that on a podcast at the weekend. Just cool. Who gets who and sees. Hmm. Okay, my friend, let's move it on from the Champions League. Let's get to the Europa League. Arsenal uh, drew 2 2 in sporting. Um, <laughs> Boys to the Emirates. It was 1 1. What got a game. A game. It ended up 1 1 in uh, a normal time. We go to extra time. We end up going to penalties. And it's sporting in 1 um, 5 3 on penalties. A quite dramatic hmm. ending uh, uh, of what was a great game over two games. Two Brilliant game. quite evenly spaced teams. Yeah. Sporting. Dropping from the Champions League, I think you could see the quality. They, they, their coach, Robert, I know, is somebody who's been held in very high regard. I think he's on Spurs list or somewhere I was reading. Um, he's a young coach who many have got their eye on in terms of style of play, um, you know, pressing the ball, good structure, uh, good age. Um, but it was a night, Rob, where... I suppose all along the silver lining for Mikel Arteta is, well, they're better off out of that. They can concentrate on the league. I just didn't feel it was one of those nights. It didn't feel like it was one of those better off out of it. Not when you have a couple of injuries. Tommy Asu early, Saliba looks like a back injury. Don't know how bad that is. Yeah. Jesus came on, came started. at 45 minutes, yeah. started. You know, started yeah. came on, but it affected... Mikel Arteta was just talking after the game how it affected his choices of making different subs. He only had one window then that he could make further subs and wasn't as he would like. He accepts that injuries are going to happen because um, he's generally played strong teams in this competition, Rob, hasn't he? He's mm. not used this as a resting or getting others minutes. He's generally gone with a fair portion of his of his, of his first 11, six, seven 
eight of his first 11 with some sprinkled in. Yeah, he has. But, but I mean, I think he's got no regrets. You know, I think he'll have no regrets about the night, Rob. Mm. It was a brilliant game of football. Yeah. He rested his important players. So he did. And I think he was right to do that. Trossard, Saka, Odegaard, Partey and Ben White were all rested. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's half of his outfield team were rested in this game. Great mm. news for Grabu Jesus, by the way. Who I thought looked yeah. sharp. Looked yeah. really, really sharp in that first 45 minutes. So I think he made the changes that, I don't, again, I, I think it's sensible. I think he did it in a right way. The team was struggling. He brings on all the the, the star players, if you like, and they got yeah. better as he said in his interview, Rob, they got better as the game wore on. Mm-hmm. And they finished with some energy, by the way. I looked at yeah. the second half of extra time. I'm like, wow. Now, I know that there's five subs now. And like, yeah. maybe the, the better players came on late. So they were fresh. But there was some energy about Arsenal. And any time the ball went dead, I mean, you could see Arteta. The camera went right in on his on his little team talks. I mean, it, the, the, him yeah, and his team were fired, fired up. up. Yeah, they were fired, fired up. up. The fans yeah. were up for yeah. it. It wasn't one of them, Rob, where... You know, you sort of said, well, they're better off out of it. Like, th- that that wasn't, they, there was some determination in that stadium for them to go through. Mm-hmm. And it was a brilliant game of football, by the way. I mean, what about the goal? What, what about oh. the goal from from almost the halfway line? Pedro yeah. Gonçalves. Gonçalves, yeah. Gonçalves, yeah. Um, what a goal that was. Oh. I mean, it, it was, I, th- I thought they were excellent teams. They were good. Yeah. Really, yeah. really good. a good team. I thought it was a really good game. Two, yeah. two very good teams. Times they pressed Arsenal, got the ball back from them. Quick counter attacks, Arsenal had good build ups, made yeah. good chances. I got to trust all could have won it in extra time because yeah, he goes past the goalkeeper, makes a save, hits the post, comes comes out. I mean, that you know, probably changes the night. So, um, yeah. But yeah, it was say. interesting that, yeah, you know, what was pleasing in, in your writing that Mikel Arteta kept was, was very positive at the end, talked about turning this now into. 11 Cup finals or whatever they're going to need between now and the end of the season. And, and all focus is on Crystal Palace Sunday afternoon at, um, at the Emirates. Yeah. And, you know, we can say all we said there about the night at the Emirates and yeah. how they gave it their best shot for that particular occasion. But it is going to help them. It, is, it just is. It's going to help them. Less games, the Thursday, yeah. Sunday thing. Yeah, absolutely. They can focus now weekend to weekend. Mm. Absolute full focus. The, the yeah. William Saliba thing will be a... Will be a will be a worry now. Again, yeah. I don't know if there's any reports. This well, again, we're record, recording this like very soon after the yeah. game finished. Um, that's Rob, Rob Holding key. came in. I thought he did okay. Actually, I thought Rob Holding did all right. Yeah, but we well, know no, well, he, it's not celibate. No, no, no yeah, that's 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 Gabriel. something mm. that Arsenal fans might be just sweating on a little bit. They they this team has been so great because it's been the same team for the majority. Yeah. Um, and the Palace game, you know, at the weekend, they got to go. They got to go again now. That that's yeah, yeah. I know the Palace have been struggling and they can't win a game. I don't think they've won a game in twenty twenty three. No, not in twenty twenty three. No. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, Arsenal's focus will quickly switch to that. And again, the star players, some of them, some of them played the whole game, will yeah. be fresher for that game. So yeah. no, I I just thought it was a great game, good entertainment. Fans loved it. We're into it. Arteta did the right thing, rested a few, but absolutely went out to win the game. Um, and it was Martinelli who missed a penalty, wasn't it? In the penalty shootout. Yeah, yeah. And that's just one of those things. It was just, it was just a fun night, a, a great game to watch from the beginning to the very end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and all focus now on the Premier League on mm-hmm. Sunday. When again, I think the fans will have a, a bit to play because if there's any flatness of his few tired legs. I saw one or two players just stretching towards the end of it as we get into extra time. Obviously. Mm. It does take out on you physically and emotionally. Um, they've got to get themselves right, what, three days now, sort of a Friday, Saturday, get the sort of on field training prep. Yeah. And Sunday, you got to go. Yeah. You know, you so go there's, there's mm-hmm. not a lot of time. Mm-hmm. But um, a little test, but a great incentive, Rob. If, if they do win at the weekend, they go eight points clear at this stage of the season. Just starts to pile a little bit of, mm-hmm. of pressure on, over to, to Manchester mm-hmm. City. That game, Arsenal v Palace, is on 9 a.m. Eastern time on USA and Telemundo. Mm. Okay, my friend. All right. Manchester United. Um, yes. Don't think we ever thought this one was in too much doubt. 4-1 up from the first leg against Betis. Uh, if, I, if I was to say to you, close your eyes, think of a Manchester United player that did, <laughs> did score if you didn't see a thing, you'd probably say Marcus Rashford. You'd probably be right. He's probably mm. his, what, 27th goal in all competitions oh. this season. Uh, nine assists add to that in 43 games this season, Robbie. His best return and 
I mean, the, the guy's on absolute fire. He had a couple of other chances, Rob, maybe some even easier um, that they didn't take. But the one who scores a beauty, Casemiro, switches out to him. He comes in from that left-hand side, mm. 25 yards out. It's a cross mm. the ball. It's a beautiful strike. Um, and the trademark celebration, the 1-0 the, the win for Ten Hag, and you know, he goes through in the competition. Yeah, they go through, not bothered really in the second half. I thought they were, mm. I mean, the first 45 minutes, Rob, you know, they were a little, they weren't, they were a little sloppy for yeah, them. Yeah, they weren't quite at it. Yeah, yeah they weren't quite at it's it. But again, when you got that amount of lead, in it, yeah, it's got to be natural for the players just to, to just to be a little bit more careful and not and not give everything at every moment. So they weren't. It wasn't sharp United, but mm. Rashford like pulls his foot back and twenty yards out. It's amazing, isn't it, Rob? Out when you, when you're in a scoring. I mean, if he was desperate for a goal, yeah, maybe yeah. he's not hitting that. It's mm. certainly not going to go in. It's just it's like this. It's like a habit, isn't it? Like winning's a habit. Like scoring yeah. goals, it's like a little habit. Whatever he does, is it's all going. He's not thinking about it. Maybe um, another goal for him, and it's like my my one thing with Man United of finishing the top four because they've still got a job on to do that. There's there's going to be some challenge now from the others. Yeah. I I always think if Rashford's not scoring then then I would be concerned where the but yeah. where the goal's going to yeah. come from. But if he continues in this form mm. right to the end of the season, they're going to do it. They're going yeah. to finish in the top four, which would be pretty good work from the manager and from this team when they're kind of going through a transition. Um, but but job done, uh, you know, rested. I think there's a few players rested in this yeah, game. Yeah, he, he got Maguire. Maguire had minutes, didn't he? Which was That's interesting. Right. He, he's made it into the England squad, Rob, and, and um, obviously not placement. Malassi played at left back. Yeah. Casemiro and Fred, obviously Casemiro can't Bissaka play. Played. Yeah, one um, yeah, at fullback. Yeah, um, but no, not much to say. It's just no. it was just job done through yeah. to the quarterfinals. Well, fair play to Manchester United. Um, but yeah, too much for Robertis. By the way, good, good. Love to go watch football there. By the way, Seville, Seville in uh, in Spain, oh, Seville, Spain. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You got Sevilla and you got, mm. got Real Betis. Betis. Big yeah. stadium, that big mm. stadium, good atmosphere. Um, but but United much too good for Betis. Over yeah. two legs. Yeah. Uh, let's take it to London Stadium, mate. Uh, West Ham. Um, we're tuning up from the first leg away at Larnaca. Mate, a 4 0 win at home. Um, pretty convincing for David Moyes and his men. So I think that's 10 wins now in this competition, uh, European Europa Conference League this season. Yeah. 10 straight wins for West Ham. That, I mean, I suppose the question is, Rob, some will suggest West Ham's predicament in, in, in the league. Would they be better off getting out of the competition? A bit like maybe some could su suggest it, or some, you know, going for the title. Would they be better off out? Um, I suppose you, I can see arguments for both in some respects. I'm of the impression, and you tell me it's different for you or how you you see it. I always think Rob, winning football in a football club mm. builds confidence, good spirit, uh, togetherness. So I would rather playing games and win them on a Thursday night and have whether it's a Sunday game or whatever on the back of a win than be on a losing run going from week to week and not be feeling that good about myself. I think Jared Bowen getting a couple of goals is great. Skamaka getting a goal is, is important. Forward scoring goals and getting a, a feel-good factor. So in this instance, I actually think it's a competition that might help West Ham staying in the league. So why hasn't it helped them to this point? There you go. Let's well, throw it back at you. Why yeah, hasn't it helped them? It's not helped them. It's not it, helped them. It hasn't. But I'm saying you get you get confidence from wins. You get confidence from scoring. You've just made the point about Marcus Rashford. Jared Bowen will be feeling a way better about himself, having got two goals in this competition that some may say is is it not necessary. Some may say is is a, is a hindrance. His form in the, in, the, in the league hasn't been great. He's just got two goals. Now, we can he take that buzz into, into the Premier League? Yeah, I, I just... where Listen, I don't totally disagree with that, Rob. All I would say is that this competition and the quality, the level, you know, mm. playing blimmin... It was it Arnica? La like, Larnica. Larnica. <laughs> Larnica. Larnica. <laughs> Arnica. That's the creamy, that's the creamy <laughs> part of the bruise on your arm. Um, yeah, they have been a bit bruised, West Ham. Yeah, they have been a bit bruised. Maybe it Arnica was cream. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, what I would say is, and, and yeah, you're right. If players are scoring goals, that's great. But they got to go again on Sunday. So if it's any detriment to those yeah. players' levels, fitness levels or energy levels that you've, wait, not wasted, mm. but you've used in this, this, you know, this low-level European competition, that's not going to be good for their survival. So, yeah, it's great winning, Rob. Mm. And 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 I don't, not that I'd say that you want to get out of it, but but I would if I was the manager, I would be absolutely 
really careful that I want my star players yeah, in tip top yeah. condition mm. for the Premier League. And yeah. if, if, if it, and I, again, I didn't watch this, I don't know the full details, whether the, the important players played the whole 90 minutes or whatever. Yeah, look but, at but the that's, team. Um, that, was, that was a strong team. Front four of Boeing, Finals, Lanzini, Skamaka. You're right. Now, did they play, if they played the whole game and stuff, then, then no, they, you know, they came off. They came off. So, yeah, yeah. If, it's the, a balance. The other thing, and not to be pedantic, and I, and I do get your point, is that I don't think West Ham play this weekend. I think because of the cup, they've got no game now through till oh. the international weekend. So, so it, is a, it is a game you can play. It's or a yeah. game to play them and then think about whatever happens later on. But uh, listen, yeah. I, I totally get your point. And it's no use winning the the, the the Europa Conference League or going to the final and getting relegated. I'm not sure any West Ham fans are going to say, oh, that's a great, really no. great season. No. Priority has to be, should always be, yeah. the, the Premier League. Not only, yeah. you know, they've a team who, who've been in the European places, not just stayed in the league. So, um, mm. but I think we both think David Moyes should be given the time. It yeah. looks like, you know, uh, a draw last week. Um get them a point and then after the international break they're seriously gonna have to get their head down and, and, and get a couple yeah, of yeah that's the next game robin it that's the next game yeah, is, april, uh, second, is april yeah. the second so they have mm. got a stint so yeah so that so this particular thursday yeah that's okay obviously it's a to, bit of a gimme yeah yeah that's good that's good and then, okay my friend let's it, it's a busy week a mixed bag of, of europa uh europa conference league and champions league and we had a couple of premier league games as well and um, while it was difficult to catch a bit of everything, I, I kind of kept my eye on uh, Southampton and Brentford because I, I, I'm looking at Southampton at, at the weekend, uh, an important game they, they've got against Spurs. Mm. Um, despite all the positivity of Ruben Sellers, and he says a lot of the good, right things, and there's good noises coming out of the football club, Rob. Um, what, what I saw in Southampton is a team that want possession of the ball, a team that are comfortable in possession and look like they're doing their work in possession, um, doesn't necessarily lead to too many chances. The wide players, Perro and, and Walker Peter, actually Walker Peter's actually the, the two most dangerous in, in terms of team play, getting wide and, and maybe trying to make things happen. Um, but they got sucker punts by a Brentford team with way too much streetwise. Set piece, which they're mm. brilliant at. Brentford, one of the best, yeah. don't gain enough credit for that. Breakaway goal yeah. with counter-attack transition, which they're great at. Didn't have, I think, over the over the course of, of both halves, and I was trying to keep an eye on the possession, but I think Southampton had more possession of the ball. It's Brentford's a bit like, yeah, you can have it. You can feel that you're doing all right, but we'll win it and we'll do the important things. And I think there's, I almost felt like there was a bit of a learning for Sellers. In, in the, let's not get too preoccupied in just possession and just the ball and just... You've got to win football matches. You've got to manage moments. You've got to see things out. And you've got to get the balance right, Rob, between a team that don't look like there's a load of goals in them no. to try and keep them in the league. Mm. Yeah, I mean, similar kind of observation, Rob. I had my arm both of these games. I had mm. my laptop and my, my TV going. And uh, all I saw was tons of energy from Southampton. And yeah. that's what a new manager will give. Yeah, and good. Yeah. we know that their squad is quite a young squad. Some young mm. players are brought in. So the energy from the young players is apparent. Yeah. Um, but they don't create enough, Rob. They mm. don't create enough. They don't look like they're going to score. No. They don't look like they're going to create too much. Ellie Nussi on the right-hand side. Yeah. Flatters to deceive a little bit. The striking situation. The contrast with them in Brentford, with Wissa, with Ivan Tony, yeah. with Mbomo. Whether you call it no, uh, streetwise or physicality, they're scorers. They're scorers. And that's the difference. Brentford have got three regular scores and one who's just been called up for the uh, the national team yeah, Ivan Tony. Tony. Yeah. you know a, a very very good striker at Premier League level now and fair play to him for making mm. that uh, switch fair play for the team for playing in a style that suits him and the wide players the flick-ons the little yeah. balls in behind the physicality the set pieces so the manager and the club have, are well aligned getting this mm. team going in the right direction and Southampton have just you know, from the, the switches they made, the changes they made with managers and young players and all the signings they made, the January going back to some more experienced players to come back and, yeah. and, and change the balance back again. They just don't look like they've got enough players that can create and score mm. goals. And that is, is, in a nutshell, what I saw. So in terms of that result, Rob, when you consider the next few weeks, Spurs, Man City, Arsenal, Newcastle United, yeah. a very difficult run. Yeah. You play Brentford at home, and you lose two yeah. nil is a yeah. is a big body blow. It's a punch in the in the, the kidneys. Right. It's it's a 
I, I don't know how they get up now and try and find the results to get well, them out of trouble. In fairness to him, Rob, and and and, and, I, and I totally agree because I think we had a similar outlook on the game. But they have beaten Chelsea, they have drawn at Manchester United, so I think you can go back to those moments and and try and say, listen, this is when we were, yeah. we were better or at our best. But yeah, you you've got to find a way way to be more. Um, the home the yeah. home the home form is always important. Form isn't it? Ter- it's, yeah, it's, they've, they've got the worst home form in the, in the league, Rob. Hmm. So hmm. that tells you everything. Six yeah. of the last seven at home, they've lost. Um, yeah, um, you know, unless we can find, find a war prowse free kick, really, we're, we're starting to struggle where the yeah. next goal might yeah. come from, yeah, uh, which is a struggle. But, um, listen, I, I like what I've seen about Celez. We're going to find out a little bit more about him and his group of players, and, and can they find a way out? Maybe playing against some of the bigger boys has given them a little bit more incentive. But, uh, no, I, I thought they were well beaten by it. I just thought. A Brentford team that had too yeah. much know-how, too many good players, really better players in in the yeah. decisive area of the pitch. Uh, don't know if you caught your eye on Brighton Palace, the M23 derby or rivalry. It's not quite the Manchester North London no. um, derby, but it, it means a lot to people down from from those parts of the world. Um, it was interesting after the game. I heard uh, Roberto Deserbi say. We didn't play particularly well today, but but got the win, uh, which is the standards he set. Uh, I thought it was a beautifully uh, cultivated goal. Got played into Matoma. He gets turned, yeah. plays into uh, Solly March, who makes a beautiful run. Mm. One touch to set, one touch to finish. Yeah. Uh, it was a brilliant finish. And again, a bit a bit like um, Southampton, Rob, you, you start to look at Crystal Palace and think, not sure where the goals are coming. Edward was back in the team. Mr. Header from... Six yards out, I can't quite believe any centre forward of his, of his worth. At mm. least, Rob, we sh- the line is at least he should hit the target. He shouldn't hit the target, he should score a goal. Mm. A ball mm. comes in. It's a striker not doing his job or not able to do his job. Outside of that, I thought they had some good moments, started the yeah. game quite well. Uh, they were lively and looked like they're up for it. But I think over time, you don't know where goals coming from, Rob. One or two players look a little bit frustrated to me with, with, with what's happening and you know for all the talent the Elise's the, the the Zahars you know people of that caliber something's not going right at that football club no it's a struggle right now Rob um you know bad misses I made notes of the bad mm. misses Edward yeah uh, Michael Elise Zaha yeah. all all these players had really good opportunities to score goals and when it's not going in then obviously it's going to be a big struggle. Mm. Young goalkeeper uh, makes yeah. good saves. Yeah, probably. Whitworth. Yeah, Joe Whitworth, might yeah. be a bit dis- nineteen years of age. Mm. Might be disappointed that he just got caught out with that that solid march. Took the shot really yeah. early. Yeah, with his left foot finds the far corner. And Brighton are playing a conference. Just just on Palace's plight, Rob. I know that the the points is really really tight. Right, they're twelfth yeah. in the table still. Yeah. Twenty seven. They they three points. Three points got. above bottom now. Yeah. Right. But that's eight teams below them, mm. right? And I know some have got a game to play. Yeah. I know some of them got a better goal difference. Some haven't. That's mm. eight teams below them, Rob. So yeah. those eight teams, you know, they've still got to find a way to get past Crystal Palace in the league table. Even though that the points gap is, is is little, they've still got to win those games. They've still got to get up there. So with 27 mm. points, you win a game, you get under 30. You know, we're looking at 36 points and you might be all right. I just feel like... I still think they're going to be okay. That's what I'm trying to say. And yeah. it's okay when you say three points to the bottom three, but that's the league table is the league table. They're the 12th best team right now. They're not the 18th, the 19th, or the 20th. And listen, a few games. Yeah, but yeah, they're not all going to win, Rob. Are they? But the yeah, 18th, but what I think that the win. worry, Rob, is that some are that Bournemouth find a result, that Southampton have found a result, that one or two. I mean, they go to Arsenal this weekend, Rob. No win since the turn mm. of the year. They go to Arsenal, which, despite Arsenal going as far as they did in, in the competition, I'm to play extra time and penalties. I still fancy Arsenal to beat them at, at the weekend because mm. of what they have at the yeah. top end of the pitch compared to Crystal Palace. Yeah. So all of a sudden, that's another game gone. Yeah. That's another three points missing. I, but, I but the others like are going to win, haven't they? The yeah, others are going to like win. You don't think there'll be a panic at Crystal Palace? I know some of the people there reasonably well. But I think they'll be concerned, Rob, and I think they'll be concerned oh, yeah. to get those points sooner rather than yeah. later. This isn't yeah. a club who can afford to gamble at, at being in the league. They have to be in the Premier League. There's 
a lot of big talk about building new state, building um, the ground up and, and new additions and bringing new ownership groups into the football club. So it's a very ambitious club um, with some ambitious targets and, and, and championship football is definitely not one of them. Mm. Just thinking about their record since the beginning of 2023, which is yeah. a bit of a shocker. Um, yeah. Is Patrick Vieira... Would they made a ch- would they make a change, Rob? I mean, I, I mean, I I would not support that right no, now. No, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't three, right now. They, they, I think they're a club. I think they're a club that would not want to, but I think would be prepared to if they have to, Rob. I think that's how best to put it. I don't mm. think they'd want to, and I don't think they're rushing to, and I don't think there's any like immediate. But I think in two or three games, if we're talking about the same run, no wins in in 2023, maybe the odd draw here and there, Mm. and it starts to tighten up. You say those eight teams do start to tighten up. Mm. I don't think... I think unless form changes and we're getting down to three, four, five games, I might be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they made a change then, just to to freshen up. (laughs) I mean, it's football, isn't it? I mean, oh, the job that, the job that he did last year yeah, with a big a big change mm. in in style. A lot of new players left the club and and they had a really good yeah. season last year. Finished yeah. comfortably in twelfth spot. Some difficult times this year. You go twelve games or whatever it is, eleven, twelve games, yeah, without, um, a, win, yeah. without a win, and all of a mm. sudden the spotlight is on, and and the, and the hot flipping potato gets chucked from one manager, <laughs> yeah. and it's coming, yeah, it's so coming, Patrick. You, way. Patrick, yeah. yeah it's gonna be also, a Rob, just when you've got Eze, Elise. Zaha. Yeah, where's Eze? Yeah, where's Eze? I don't know. Eze's I don't understand why he's not out. playing. He's been why he's in and out. Playing. You know, Edward, are you? It seems like there's enough there. Yeah, to, to, and defensively, they've been strong enough. Yeah. Defensively, decent. decent yeah, he's team. got in the England squad again this time. Right. Alisson's a great player that we've known. Yeah. Mitchell's consistent. Yeah. You know, Klein's been, been, you know, been, yeah. been decent. Yeah. So, I mean, that 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 sort of what, what makes it a little bit difficult for, for Patrick is that, that people will look and think, this group should be doing better yeah, than they are. Mm. But mm. Um, yeah, we'll have to see how, how that one goes. Um, going to be a tight one between now and obviously first first look at, uh, on Sunday at the Emirates where they, they go against an Arsenal team. Can they benefit mm. from Arsenal going out of the competition and playing 120 minutes in, in penalties? We'll have to see uh, how mm. that one goes. Listen, mate, we'll wrap it up there on a bit of a mixed bag of midweek football, European and domestic football where both Manchester teams make it. Liverpool lose, West Ham win. Arsenal draw but drop out the Europa League and we'll find out if that's a good thing or not. While Brighton and Brentford still dream of European football themselves next season. We'll be back on Sunday, that's March the 19th, when we'll look back on match week 28 and see if Arsenal can put three an eight-point gap between them and Manchester City. But for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.